You're watching Oilers Nation every day with Tyler Uremchak. Your one-stop shop for all things Oilers. We are all in on the new look Edmonton Oilers. We are all in on Chris Knobloch. You can call us Knob Gobblers. Let's get into it with the lead. Uh, well, there you have it, folks. You like that new nickname? Gobble, 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 gobble. I don't know if I like... We uh, got Knob yeah. and we're gobbling dubs. <laughs> Woo! Jamie Winston, E to W. <laughs> gobbling do- dubs. Uh, welcome into Oilers Nation oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. every <laughs> single day. Well, every Monday to Friday and then sometimes on Saturdays if we want to do bonus episodes. Uh, we are live from the Sports Closet Studio. Feels good to be back in this Sports Closet Studio. My favorite one. Mm-hmm. Um, they still got... Heritage Classic jersey? Maybe you still want to buy one of these. Maybe we should go redecorate the studio as well. When did we move that? Ah, hey. Got to keep your head on a swivel, baby. I'm still looking for that Wendy's sign that <laughs> we have in there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> as always, it is a short forward, not giant game day edition of the show, but a giant game recap edition yes. of the show. There is a lot to get to. Our pal Bruce Kerlock, who is the smartest person who makes appearances on the show. I don't think that's much of a stretch. No, I think that's probably valid. He's going to stop by at 1230 and uh, give us a little breakdown of what we could see from Chris Knobloch's new system. And also, did we see any of it last night? Which is an interesting debate to get into. Also, we are live on the Oilers Nation YouTube where we're looking for you to hit that like button. And we are looking for your comments on the Finning Cat YouTube chat. Tyler Mulek says, I believed in the Woody but now in the knob, I will trust a lot of you not really liking uh, my nickname for that. Uh, AJ said, Weird. yikes. A couple of you said, LOL. So maybe. LMA- LMFAL. Uh, Nation gear, can we get that on a shirt? Who would wear it? You. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Hell yeah. You would have to. You just branded yourself of it now. Right yeah. here. I'm absolutely <laughs> nobbling some. I can't even say it. <laughs> Joel says, I've been called worse as an Oilers fan. Yeah, that's um, Mr. Enigmatic says, I like the video, but don't ever call me that ever again, you <laughs> degen. Um, someone also asked how the Buffalo Bills are doing. No. Um, oh, the Edmonton sorry. Oilers, though, they got a big win yesterday. And while some people are sitting there and going, look at that, new coach, new dub, second straight time, the Oilers have had a coach make his NHL debut, and they've beaten the Islanders in that game. 3-1 last time. What but did 4-1 it? under Chris Knobloch. So who's better? Makes you think. Um, I'm just going to come out right ahead and say it. Jay Woodcroft probably ripped every hair out of his head watching that game last yeah, night. Probably. Because why did the Oilers lose a bunch of games this season? Goalies can't make a save. Stars didn't want to show up. Power play was cold as shit. What <laughs> happened last night? Their goalie made a shitload of saves. Their power play was absolutely electric and timely. And their two-star players decided, hey, you know what? We might actually take some hard strides, actually do something good tonight. And, come on. That would they didn't even play good. From like an from like a dynamic oh, scoring no. chance perspective, that was actually one of their <laughs> least impressive efforts. Not worst efforts, but least impressive. They've only been outshot at five on five four times this year. That was one of those games. <laughs> And they win 4-1. And it's like, I don't know. Again, with Bruce, he'll give us some... Because I was texting him last night during the game. And and there were some encouraging signs by this Chris Knobloch-led group. I'm not trying to totally dismiss that. But the idea that the coaching change, change woke them up and propelled them to that win last night... It's not true. We've been talking for how long that this team's going to start getting some luck again at some point. Yeah. Last night, there's your luck. Last night, it was... I was in the Belgium last night. Obviously, the Islanders scored very early in the game. What was it? 40 seconds? I'm telling you, people were not pleased in that building. It was a very flat atmosphere. The others were very flat on the ice. And people wanted something to cheer about. And it wasn't until Leon Dreisaitl decided, I'm going to take over this game for the next five minutes or so, yeah. that the building really got some energy in it. But it, it just lacked. And then just to fast forward a little bit to the end of the game, despite a win, like Leon Dreisaitl did his post game. It, it, with the one he does with Tony on the ice yep. and he was not not pleased at all like he just seemed very frustrated with the entire situation and kind of go back and look at the goals and everything none of them were like overly celebrated in like a big manner there's a there's a weird sass about this team at the moment and I don't know if I'm on board for it yeah I would have loved and we did this debate a couple of years ago I remember when they just like weren't showing emotions after yeah. goals because it was just McDavid and Drysdale doing it all I didn't like that I would like to see them play with a bit more emotion 
Um, but I mean, still last night, that that's just a good win to go out and get. The reason, yes, and you it. you probably saw on the Nation Vacation the the new bit I'm kind of doing. It's it's just the the thumbs up. It's just that. Are you the creator? Yeah. So my thinking behind it is like I'm not, and I've said this on the show. I'm not getting excited about this team until it's five wins in a row. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to acknowledge good things that are happening. So when they're beating the hell out of the Seattle Kraken, I'm not cheering, but I'm giving you a thumbs up because you're sure. doing the right things. Last night against the Islanders, it was not your best effort, but you found a way to go out and get a victory. You get a thumbs up from me for that one. I'll give him one too. I'm not going to sit here and, yep, thank you, AB. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to sit here and start being like, they're back or whatever. It's been two wins. Are there some encouraging signs? Yes. But last night was a perfect example of finally having a game where the bounces go your way. Cal Clutterbuck or whatever comes in on the wing, fires one off Skinner's glove and off the post. If that goes in, baby, we're not talking about a dub today. No, we are not. And I, I couldn't believe that play. I forgot all about it until you said it. Like That was Vinny that got beat very hard oh, by yeah. Cal Clutterbuck. I was, uh, it was a bit worrisome. And it beat Clutter Stu's glove. Yeah, well, <laughs> Clutterbuck's a, he's a good NHL. He's been around for a while. Famously known for injuring taylor hall or taylor hall got suspended when he need yeah, him or something, something like, like that, that yeah. that's how i remember kyle clutterbuck and then yeah like flying down the wing like he was 21 all over again it was uh it was a weird one but yeah the others managed to managed to come out on top but the thing i i like to see the most from last night was the way the minutes were assembled like distributed not assembled obviously it could have worked it could have worked Dylan Holloway going out helped that. And the fact there was what the others have th three power plays. The third one was like two seconds or whatever it was. Yeah. Five and five play was pretty much throughout that game. And you got to see Lavoie Hamlin play quite a bit of minutes. It was uh it was encouraging. I, I I liked what we've seen so far from Coach Garlic. Coach Garlic. I like calling him the vampire hunter last night. Really? The vampire punk is garlic. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Did you really just ask sure. <laughs> Well, I you caught me off guard with it a little bit. Uh, this from Gregor, Knobloch's first win, Edmonton's first winning streak, we say with air quotes yeah. for those listening as a podcast. McDavid's first goal since October 17th. And like like we said yesterday, you got the sense he just really needed to see one go through the hoop. That goal is the definition of just seeing one go through the hoop because he's looking back and watching it go off a D-man <laughs> skate and somehow pick up velocity and then trickle over the goal line. It was like yeah. the weirdest goal I've maybe ever seen 97 score. I think we have a look at it here if we uh, if we want to run it. But it was a big goal too, right? Because obviously you go up 3-1 at that point in the third period. You're starting to feel good. Um, but credit to the Oilers. There was like 15 seconds of like, whoa, what the hell is going on here? And then they just locked down that hockey game. Like the Islanders really didn't get much of a breath for the for the remainder of the game. No, they didn't. They didn't really lock much in. The Oilers were able to maintain possession. And even when the Islanders got the power play at the end and pulled the goalie, it was almost instant that the yeah. Oilers got the puck back and were able to score. And it was it was promising. It was a lot of promise last night. First win at Rogers Place this season. Now I'm gonna bring something up, and I, I can't remember if this was last year. But did Hunter always carry a massive flag that said play La Bomba? Yeah. Really? I've never mm -hmm. noticed that before. Well, you, you were in attendance last night. What was the atmosphere like in the arena? The first few, probably 10 minutes or so, were not very good. The middle portion, uh, towards the end of the first period, it got a lot better. And then second period was kind of flat, too, because the others didn't do much. But the yeah. third period, it was one of those games where the others got the goal, the fans started... The DJ Tyler, what's his name again? Bose, Tyler Bose, and cool. He would play his songs. The fans would continue the song nice. once it was done. Like, vibes were pretty good. People were feeling it, but you could definitely feel a frustration of the fact where this, the organization was at the start of that game to the sense of like looking down and you're not seeing Jay Woodcroft there anymore. It was really yeah. weird, to be honest. And like, the refs came over and, and shook a new coach's hand I'm, i can't i can never say his name correctly so i'm just going to call him the new coach or coach garlic just mm -hmm. so everyone knows knob lock knob lock knob lock knob knobby lock lock knob lock knob lock chris knob lock i play hockey with a guy named greg knob lock so i can relation i don't know i uh i don't think so Maybe, I don't know. Um, I should ask him, you'd think. Uh, <laughs> but I keep wanting to call the new guy, the guy I play hockey with. But anyways, uh, Chris Knobloch. Yeah, it is weird looking down on the bench yeah. and uh, seeing that. But um, 
Do you want to guys? I want to talk about the lines. I do too. Okay, let's get first started. off. You want to take a stab at who led the Oilers in time on ice yesterday? Go. Uh, Cody Cece. Bingo. 22 22 at all strengths. A remarkable 20. 20- 16 at five on five for Cody CC in that hockey game. I think that's just a result. He got caught out there on a couple of long shifts. He, he played like two and a half minutes or a minute and a half more than his partner at five on five, which shouldn't usually happen. Um, and the Oilers got kind of caved when he was on the ice. So maybe we don't want that. But one area where I think our boy Chris Knobloch did change his approach a little bit. We didn't see a blender last night. No, nope, no blender. Again, when he went to McDavid, Drysaddle and Nuge or McDavid and Drysaddle as a trio, the only time he did that was like after a TV timeout or like after a long change or an icing or whatever. Situational. He, situationally, but not as a flat out, I'm yep. going back to him. Like so that. breaking down the minute reports for these lines, the Oilers top line there, Gagne, McDavid, Nuge played 1306 together at five on five. Drysidle, Hyman, and Kane played 1437 together. Liam, we kind of do this every show. We go back and look at the, the minutes for every line. Mm-hmm. I do not remember the last time they had two trios play more than 13 minutes straight up together at five on five. No, it's very, very rarely. Like, I can't remember one time, to be honest. Like, maybe in a blowout, but you got to think this game was 1 1 until, like, what was it, midway through the third period or whatever it was. And yeah, they managed to, they managed to stick with it. And I, I respect that a lot from uh, Nob Block. Yeah. And it probably would have been a lot more too if Dylan Holloway was able to stay healthy. He would have got three lines mm-hmm. who uh, who contributed really well. I should say more than three because I think that fourth line played very well last night. Well, yeah, okay. So I quickly wanted to touch on that as well because McLeod, Holloway, and Vogel played 601 together yeah. at five on five. And then when Holloway went down, it was as simple as they just elevated Ryan. And Ryan yeah. slid up there because then Ryan. Um, McLeod and Fogel played 525. So okay. again, even with an injury, he didn't veer very much from his strategy. Lavoie, Hamblin, and Ryan still played 404 together as well. So I liked that fourth line. I actually thought like Hamblin made a couple of nice little moves. He was going to some interesting areas of the ice. Lavoie had a couple, like there was the one toe drag he had in the neutral oh, zone. That was, nice. that was just like, whoa, like if this guy can just keep getting more comfortable. He's going to be a player for this team. I, I remain confident in that. He had a couple of looks where, like, if you just watch him and isolate him throughout a shift, he's always going to shooter spots. Yeah. Like you can tell this guy's a natural goal scorer. You he's hard to miss as well, because he is he's a big boy. He's oh, yeah. big. He's a little I want to say slower, but not in a negative way. I think he just uh processes a game a little bit differently yep. to other people. Similar to dry I think he's a a, mm-hmm. a good comparison to him, obviously different in many ways, but in in that sense, I I like him and I like him playing with Hamlin because Hamlin, is just a buzzsaw, isn't he? He is mm-hmm. just everywhere. I really think that guy can stick. I like him a lot, and I I wonder. I was thinking about this last night. This team isn't as strong as it could be in the sense of Connor Brown's not here, Matthias Yanmark's not here. Yeah, I think if you put Yanmark on that fourth line right now, I don't think it's as good. Like, if you have Lavoie, Hamlin, Derek Ryan, yeah, I just think that line is more dangerous than taking out a Lavoie and putting in a Yanmark. Yeah, but the nice thing with Yanmark is, and I know he hasn't been great on the PK this year, but if you can trust him more on the PK, does it ease minutes on other pieces in your lineup? Yeah, that's that's a good point. And I suppose with the status of Dylan Holloway, which we we don't know yet, I know a few people have asked in the chat, Yanmark can likely slide in there, or Connor Brown, whoever it may be. But at this point, too, like, so correct me if I'm wrong, LTIR is three weeks, correct? Yeah, uh, original Puzar pointed this out to us the other day. It's 10 games and 24 days or something, around 21 days. It feels like Yamak has been out forever. It's been, it's been two weeks. Well, okay, so the interesting thing, because, yeah, you're right. Like, he's been out since the Heritage Classic, which was on the 29th. Before so Before that. Yeah, whatever the game was yeah, before that, yeah. right? Um, so there would come a point you could retroactively do it, I believe. I'm not great at the CBA. I'm sure someone will fix or correct me on this if I'm not, but so, at some point you could do retroactive to this date we're putting them on LTIR. So does that mean you could almost go back in time in a in somewhat of a sort of way? In, well, like know, if you yeah. wanted to make a... It's, let's say like Holloway can't play, which, I mean, he wasn't on the ice today at practice for those looking yeah. for an update. Oilers lines and pairings at practice were basically the same, just Brown in for Holloway. Um, so it looks like maybe Connor Brown's getting close. Uh, if you wanted to call someone up, you could like, yeah, retroactively put Yanmark on LTIR and then have him for a couple of games and get the relief that way. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I just, 
I wonder how he's going to be because obviously Woody was a big fan of Jan Mark, and now this is a clean slate for everyone. Yep. Lavoie and Hamlin have a great opportunity here to really get in a good box of uh, Coach Garlic. It's timing a little bit, right? Like, yeah, again, Hamlin gets called up and then a coaching change happens. And yeah, I think guy, those two specifically, that's a tremendous point. Even Derek Ryan, who really struggled early in the year. He's a guy who I was saying, you can wave the guy and not miss a beat. I think he's he played a really good game last night. And now, even in the Seattle game, I noticed him doing some positive stuff. Um, I think there's some bottom six players here who should be sitting there going, this is my chance to kind of like you said, get in the good books early yeah. and establish myself as one of the coach's favorites. Yeah. And I, I, that's an interesting way they've done that. I'm, surp- I'm actually surprised Connor Brown isn't on the third line. Yeah, a little bit, but I think, uh, I think garlic liked what he saw out of uh, that trio when he put them together. Yeah, I think so too. You like how I just slipped that in? There? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, see, we're getting oh. somewhere with this new guy. But son of a bitch, we might be liking him, Liam. I'll be honest. Handsome devil. He is. He's got a good head of hair on yeah. him. Can you swing those back up, Aaron? Sorry. Sam Gagne can't play on the first line. Sam Gagne, I, he's such a good hockey player, and I can see why he's there for his intelligence, but he can't play more than 10 minutes a night he, he the boots are an issue the f- boots are a big problem yeah. and you're playing him with the fastest man in the league like when he came up we questioned if he could skate quick enough and hey there is there's nothing taken away from his effort but zach hyman can just go there and do the same job yeah now. but do you want to do you not like that second line i did they so kind of got caved a little maybe bit but. brown is the guy you put up there I think those I think three, so. though, that second line is good, but aren't they all just the same guy? And they don't they don't like playing defense. <laughs> yeah, there's also that. Like, none of them like playing defense in any way. So you probably need to put someone there with, like, a bit of a defensive conscious, yeah. which is why I'm generally more of a fan of putting Nuge on that line. Not that he's a perfect solution to the problem by any means, um, but I'm kind of more of a fan of doing that. But, I mean, yeah, the Oilers need someone who <laughs> wants to play defense. So You, you need a five-foot guy. What do they say? A five foot guy, a ten foot guy, and a fifteen foot guy. Okay. On a line. So if you look at that first line, Nuge is your ten foot guy. You can make your medium passes. Also play it in the short game. McDavid is your fifteen foot guy because he can just fly around. Yeah. Gagne is your five. I think he's foot a decent guy. five foot guy though. He is. I know it works, but you need your five foot guy to also have a bit of speed to him too, and a little bit of foot movement. I see, yeah, and I agree. Have that. And I, that, that's why that third line doesn't. Second line doesn't work. So. I just think it's, I think Ghani has got a little tenacity and a little jam right now. I think it'll probably wear away at some point over the course yeah. of a long season. So there will be an opportunity to put Connor Brown back up there. And I fully expect Connor Brown to get some, some legit runway in a top six role again here. Because if you're not block, why would you not be intrigued by that possibility? But maybe you can do something like if Brown's a bit better defensively than Hyman, which he should be, maybe you can put Brown on the second line and slide Hyman up and then. Do you like that balance a little more? I think I might. Brown and Dry yeah. have had some good games together. Granted, yep. not a big sample size there, but still. It's really too bad Holloway is down now because he was buzzing. Like these past yep. two games has been been very good for him. Best two games mm-hmm. stretch he's had ever, I think. Yeah. Right? It's probably, probably fair to say. And he only played like a period yesterday. Very impactful. Very impactful. Um, FICO says five foot passes, not five feet traveled before getting tired, Liam. So a little hey. shot at Sam Gagne from FICO. Sorry, Fico. Uh, JR, why so much love for Brown? Because he's a 20 goal guy, and we haven't really gotten to see him get comfortable here. And I think when he's on, we'll like him. Here's a difference in like we just don't like Brown yet because he hasn't done anything. Mm-hmm. Brown is better than Sam Gagne. He yeah. is. Like, yeah. Whether, yeah. You, whether you all like it or not, and I I love Sam Gagne. We all love Sam Gagne. Yep. You're just but a noted Sam just, Gagne hater, but that's fine. If we had to sign this random 34 year old PTO guy. I know Sam Gagne had that one great period, but what much else has he done outside of put in a really good effort? I'm, I I hate that I'm saying all these words. It's very harsh. Yeah. But Brown's got the upside. He does. Gagne isn't going to give you much more than he's already got. He won't. There you go. All right. I think I'm good. Should we talk about our boy Leon Dreisaitl, who, you know what? That was a roller coaster hockey game from our boy Leon. Uh, he gets that great chance early in the game and just doesn't want to shoot the puck. Turns oh, it over. No. Play goes back the way of the other. Oilers go down one nothing. There were a couple of moments where it was like, is he happy right now? Like, he doesn't seem like he really wants to be here. And then it seems like there was a moment where he sat on the bench and was like, giddy up. And then he took over the hockey game for seven <laughs> minutes. 
and then went back to being incredibly vanilla, got angry, took an incredibly dumb penalty. Um, but we can watch the goal first because this goal is, this is vintage Leon. And what Chris Knobloch should be doing is showing this clip to 29 and saying, hey man, just shoot the puck eight times a game. Like if Drysaddle did the same shot volume and, and had the same mindset of a Pasternak or a Kucherov where they go out there and are like, oh, if I get the smallest lane, I'm shooting it. Yeah. If he had that mindset, he would score 60 goals every single season. He has this past first mindset when he's not with Connor McDavid. I don't know why that gets into his game. And again, the first period last night is a great example. He passes up an opportunity right between the two dots, more or less, where he should just rip that thing through traffic and it might go in. Yeah. Um, How about that chance he had where he like, goes to put the wall oh like, i know yeah oh, a little one-handed like so nice and then he, it feels like he got that look yeah and he was like all right i want to get one yeah i'm I tired of this. tired of being the assist guy i want to mm -hmm. see one go through and he fired that shot it was an absolute bullet um owen is in on the finning cat youtube chat says dry settle is a very emotional <clears throat> player without a doubt what did luke gazdick said it to us about yeah. last week dry settle has a very bad habit of letting his emotions affect his play it's a it is not a good thing that he does <laughs> and i mean yeah we obviously have this now like, people, people uh, overreacted to this. Okay. <laughs> well, what, what, what was the overreact? I didn't see a lot of things on Twitter last night because I was at the game. I was going to say in the stands, people were very annoyed at this penalty because they had the the Oilers had the yeah. puck. It's a super dumb penalty to take. Um, but like there were people saying he should be suspended for this. Come Give on, a it's a rabbit punch. It's That's a what fine. Colby he got. Yeah. He got what he deserved. He took the two minute penalty. And he got a $5,000 fine. If anything, he like put himself in more danger by putting his head right down by some dude's skates and like going low on him like that is dumb. He's frustrated. I don't know why. Also with the way NHL refs call things, if he would have just, again, Leon, just have one hand on him and shove him and you won't get called. But he lets his emotions get the best of him. Is it a dirty play? Yeah, it's a dirty play. Would we be pissed off, Aaron, if that someone did that to Connor or Leon? Yes, absolutely. But that's nothing more than a five thousand dollar fine, which is exactly what he got. So, dirty. Uh, I actually think it was a really dirty play. I thought it was so dirty. Like that, you could see it. So right before, I know people all, all say this. Like he got did something happened to. Him? I think he got tripped or something like that. Yeah. Didn't he? Like it boarded whatever Lost it was. the puck probably. He was annoyed. <laughs> but yeah. to just do that, especially when like. He just saw red. Like, Kane literally is coming away with the puck there, and Dry is just like, ah, well, see you later, Horvat. Goodbye to that knee of yours, too. Just stupid. Stupid yeah. penalty. Yeah. I don't know how, like, again, how dirty is it? It's dirty. On a scale of 1 to 10, it's like a 5 on the dirty scale. Like a 7. I mean, man. Yeah, but you're not going to hurt a guy doing that. It's like well, a rabbit punch, dude. He, if you slew foot the guy in the same match, it's a, it's a slew foot. With like a stick, no, I don't know. I, I mean, what is either way? He, he got yeah, I know, punishment. rare. It's a bad play, it's a stupid play, emotional play, but only five G's, which is Zach yeah. Lang put it on his Twitter is equivalent to $46 to an average Canadian. Boy, that's depressing to think about. <laughs> Hockey players make a lot of money. Um, someone who I'm assuming is an Islanders fan says Horvat. Doesn't whine like Mick Weiner or Chrysidle. Chrysidle's a new one. Chrysidle's good though. Mm -hmm. oh, Chrysidle had four points last night. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he had four points last night. I know. That was but weird to look that, back on. That pass to McDavid, we never addressed it. Unbelievable. That on the power play that set up McDavid's goal, that was a crazy pass. I saw that. I was, ooh, uh, squishy is in. Petrangelo trying to chop his hands off was way worse than scale. Yeah. Yes. Like, it wasn't that bad, is my point. No, and I think he got the correct punishment. Yeah, I think he did, too. Petrangelo was an 11 out of 10. <laughs> like, yeah, Steven says, 5K well spent. That's, what, 40 bucks for an average person? Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, let's consider us an average person. I wouldn't pay 40 bucks just to, like, get in a good lick on someone. You wouldn't? Yeah, probably not. I would. Okay. Yeah, if someone said, I would, you're going to get fined $40 for doing that to someone that just did something to me, then, yeah, 100%. Okay. Well, there you go. Different mindsets. <laughs> uh, our pal Bruce Kerlock is going to stop by in a little bit. Um, just sticking with sort of the recap of last night's hockey game. You know who I thought had a very good hockey game? And some people, you know what? You might not like this, everybody. Go on. Evan Bouchard played really good last night. And last night was a very good example of when Evan Bouchard is on, he does things that no other defenseman on that blue line can do. The way he was cutting out of checks and cutting out of like the four check, 
getting away yeah. from pressure and then just snapping pucks up the ice. It it was beautiful. Um, and I know a bunch of you now have you got the Darnell Nurse bug when it comes to Boosh, and you just want to hate every single thing that guy does. And he became a bit of a whipping boy there because he was making very visible mistakes that were ending up in the back of their net. And Woody wasn't benching him. That pissed a lot of people off. And I get that. I totally understand that someone needed to be held accountable. But I just, I also think going through Evan Bouchard's game logs here, he's kind of turned it around a little bit. He's They're not good. getting scored on a lot when he's on the ice right now. Do you, can you, how far back are you looking at that? Because I, I wrote about this the other day, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, after that Minnesota game. Yeah. It's actually been really good. Tell me there more. was one game in there where he was pretty bad, if I remember correctly. But the New York game, he was doing almost a complete opposite of what he did against Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive in front of the net, giving everyone limited time and space. And with the puck, he was creating a lot of chances. And that's what Evan Bouchard's game needs to yeah. be. We do not need this guy to be an elite defensive defenseman. Mm -hmm. We need him to be slightly above average and someone who can transport the puck from one end of the ice to the other. And yeah. shoot it as hard as he can and use his, use his weapons on the power play. Last night was good from him. There was a couple of things that were like, ah, oh, if you just take a second there, you probably would have executed a little bit yeah. better. But overall, like nothing outrageous came from his game. And I, I, I agree with what you're saying too about the, the nurse stigma he almost has, has developed, I guess you could say, this season. There was times too, like in the stands, like he would do something and people would just like grow. And it's like, well, let's just see how this kind of plays out a little bit you know yeah. like he'll miss a pass and he like turns out someone instead and it's just like well you look like you're in a bad situation but then he gets out of it so it's like he knows what to do in these situations you just got to trust him a little bit more yeah so just quickly if we want to go back since if we start at the dallas game so we'll take the month of november so far for evan okay. bouchard right when he's on the ice the goals have been four to three for the oilers at five on five so they're outscoring the opposition, even though they've been losing games. Like, again, that's not a elite number, but it's clearly better than what we were getting early in the season by quite a significant margin. And then the shots in those games against Dallas with Bouchard on the ice at five on five shots were 17, six against Nashville, 13, 11 against Vancouver, 13, six against San Jose, 16, five against Edmonton, 11, three and against the Islanders last night, 11 to five. So um, he hasn't he's been on the ice for double digit shots at five on five once in his last six games here in the month of November. He has outshot the opposition in every game so far in the month of November. <laughs> Shot attempts have been 60 percent in the Oilers favor or better in every single one of the games in November. He's turning it around and whether or not you want to admit it and be grouchy or whatever. Um, Sure, you, you can do that. And Jeff chimes in, and this is a point I want to get about stats to watch, maybe stats to not always watch. He goes, Bouchard was second on the Oilers with three giveaways last night. Leon had four giveaways. Yeah. Giveaways is a tough stat to look at because, and you'll have to bear with me for a second, the only way to give away the puck is to have the puck on your stick. Who has the puck on their sticks the most? The elite players. Yeah, Good players get the puck more. So, in a way, if you're just going to purely look at giveaways, like good players will naturally give the puck away more because they have the puck on their stick the most, if that makes sense. You yeah, know? it makes sense. You have to to give away the puck. You have to have the puck. Yeah, it's a simple way to, to kind of evaluate all of this. But like if you want to go look on NHL.com and see, to do that. yeah, <laughs> so you want to see who gives away the puck the most in the NHL. Um, like a handful of good players like Matt Kachuk, Tim Stutzla, Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon, and Leon Dreisaitl are all in the top 10. And, and another thing too with the giveaway stat, mm -hmm. it might be something like, for example, the Leon one. Maybe he's tossing the puck right across the crease and right. it like goes to the other side and the, the defenseman gets it. And it also he's is a chance. It's also one of those stats that is very dependent on the building and who's yeah. counting it like it's such a subjective thing right yeah i've become a uh, less interested in some stats to be honest tyler mm. giveaways is one for me yeah takeaways is another one it's a similar thing isn't it save percentage is the big one for me this season though. you're done with save percentage i just think a collective save percentage don't think gives you the full idea of a goaltender. To be fair, one stat probably doesn't give you the full the picture of any player. The only stat that really does is points. Really? Like, in the grand scheme of things, that's the only thing that's 100% accurate in the sense of, like, what they were, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. But for, like, um, for example, Stuart Skinner against San Jose was an 833 save percentage. 
Stuart Skinner was actually relatively good in that game, and the three goals he allowed weren't the best, right? You know what yeah. I mean? It's just stuff like that, which is kind of like, ah, I think you got to take it game by game and read it by situation. Jason Greger just texted me. Dylan Holloway is going to be out a while, according to our oh. friend Jason Greger. Oh. So hopefully Brown's back um, a while. LTIR? You would uh, assume, you would right? Have, you would have to, because then also we got to consider in this James Hamlin is here on an emergency basis. Is he still an emergency? I believe basis? he hasn't officially been called up because you will just want to have healthy players. I, guess you say. But, I suppose I could just text Gregor back and say LTIR question mark. Yep. I'll let you guys know when he, when he fires one back. I can't believe you revealed your source. Sources say. He he also he goes. I just tweeted it too. So I couldn't really couldn't really. Pretend. I'm bringing it in. Couldn't really pretend. Um, it was yeah. We don't know what the injury is, but I mean, we obviously don't know if like. Okay, everyone in the chat, deep breath, deep deep breath. His season is not over. <laughs> like we don't know anything like that. Let's chill. Uh, someone just said torn ACL or MCL. Likely. Okay, we don't know, don't that. know that. We just know it's going to be a while, so it's fine. Could be like a serious knee bruise. Bad Charlie horse. We've all been there. Hey, I most mornings. All right. Uh, while you guys lose your minds on the Finning Cat YouTube chat, I should tell you that Finning Cat has their Black Friday sale. It gets Ooh. going in six days. Liam, if you want to get in on it, you can scan the QR code that is on your screen right now, or you can head over to their website at Finning Cat. Um, they're going to be doing basically from the 20th to the 24th, a new deal drops every day, and those deals stay for a whole week. So plenty of opportunity to save on everything you need to uh, to get your business running to the right level. Visit finningcat.com for a location near you. Um, Jason, text me back. I hope he doesn't mind that I... He should know I'm doing this on the air, right? Text me while I'm live. He did say if it helps your show. Uh, I don't think they will as it gains a little benefit for them. Just means they don't accrue any cap space. If they need it, they could, I suspect. But a while would tell me more than one month. So... Oh... oh. Damn, that sucks. See, son of a gun. I I don't want to speculate on this, but I, I think his leg. Might going need to to. I think his legs cut off. I didn't see him leave the ice with one. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't realize until the third period. He yeah, wasn't yeah. I thought, why is Kane skating with Hamlin and Lavoie? He's been all right today, but um, I think this is probably more of a bone thing than a ligament thing. Like just the way he fell, he, he hit the boards. Yeah, I don't know, man. Right? Like I don't know. I, I just think like people saying like, yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, it's like yeah, I don't think like you look like it's not like he, he fell into the boards. Yeah, I think just this a go, massively I think... swollen knee is what I'm hoping for. Okay, you know what? We got to move on. Why? <laughs> oh, because because we're playing news. doctor. <laughs> well, I know, but like, what are we doing here? <laughs> well, maybe, and remember, Bru maybe Bruce knows. Well, I was saying, remember when we said Bruce Kerlock is the smartest guest we have on the show? If he has to sit in the waiting room and listen to us talk like this for another five minutes, his brain might explode. Well, I, got a, I got the first question for Bruce. <laughs> okay. Well, let's bring in our friend Bruce Kerlock on the Star Mechanical Guest Line, Edmonton's number one plumbing and heating company. Um, Bruce, we're very sorry you had to sit and listen to us play doctor. Um, but Liam has the first question. Aaron, we can see your hands. <laughs> Bruce, do you think Dylan Holloway injured his bone or his <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it did look like he went knee first into the boards. I said I said the same thing actually when it happened. I wondered if it was right on the kneecap, but who knows? I mean it, who knows, right? Just I feel bad for the kid because oh, he really was coming. And I suspect as much as the hope is. Ryan McLeod takes a step and Warren Fogel carries on. I really think they there was a lot of expectation that Hall, Holloway could carry that line. And I think he was going to. Uh, so, you know, hope for the best that it's relatively short term and, you know, get him back and get him up and going again. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about last night, a 4-1 win for the <laughs> Oilers. I started the show by kind of saying, you know, I, I don't know if that's a victory. That's a direct result of the coaching change. It feels like a night where special teams came through and they got a ton of saves. And if that was the case in October, Jay Woodcroft's probably still the coach of this hockey team. Did you see anything substantial in the way they played last night? So, I mean, there was a couple of material tactical changes. I mean, they moved the, the neutral zone, went back to the one, two, two, which they ran last year. Um, I noted in an article I wrote for Oilers Nation this morning that did something a little bit more sophisticated with it too. Um, 
after the uh, third goal. They actually more ran a 1-4 in the neutral zone. So if you remember the Vegas series last year, Vegas would often have four guys piled up between the center ice line and their blue line and basically clog the entire neutral zone up. And the Oilers actually did that on quite a few occasions after that third goal, almost a not a prevent defense, but a, a little more conservative approach. And they did it a little bit on line change. So there was a little bit of that. Um, you know, one of the things I noted the other day uh, about Knobloch is he likes to move the puck up the ice quick. Uh, you could see that last night early on anyways. There was a pretty concerted effort by the Oiler defenseman to move the puck up quicker. Uh, I think that is a going to be a big help uh, for this team. Get it into the hands of the skilled forwards. That's the strength of the team. Get moving. <laughs> you know, do we have the defenseman that can do that? That'll be the, the tell. But, you know, so I wouldn't say anything major uh, was changed little bit of tweaks. I think you'll probably see a little bit more as we go along. Um, uh, I expect them to probably attack um, East-West a lot more uh, under Doblock. At least that's what it looks like, you know, in his minor league uh, experience. He loves to go across the railroad coming up the ice. Um, I think that's an ad, uh, advantageous thing for this group as well. So, but you didn't see that much last night. I, you know, that game last night to me is exactly what Jay Woodcroft would have probably dreamed up to be entirely candid, which is saw off at five on five and win the special teams game, limit your chances against. And when you do, you know, when there is a chance against Stuart Skinner comes up big, that's really what that game was. Yeah, and it felt like too. Like I was impressed when they went up three one. It they, it seemed like they had a good mindset about what they needed to do. It seems like they kind of played a relatively calm style, which was nice to see. Maybe that's something that could become a characteristic of this team is they get a lead and they know how to play with it. You, you know, a couple of things there, right? Like you use the word calm, and I saw a lot of the players use the word calm, and it's certainly when you you know you see Nobla uh, talk, it's calm. And- it's quiet, and, um, so, you know. So that may I don't be hard for me to see, think that that would rub off that quickly. What I, you know, but but maybe it did. The other part to it, I think, more than anything, was is just you know there wasn't a blender on the forward lines. Caveat the Holloway injury. Uh, most of the guys played with the exact same players they started with. Uh, there was, I think, one shift where Dreisaitl and McDavid came together late in a period. I think it was the second period, if I remember right. But other than that, they stayed apart. Um, I think that's a good thing. Like, it just, you know, continuity keeps keeps you, you know, it's, it's you know, it's certainty, right? It's familiarity. So you're kind of used to what's happening, who you're playing with. And the other big thing, I think this is the biggest thing coming out of that game. There was a couple of occasions where Knobloch had a chance to make a line change that for sure Jay, Knobloch, or Jay Woodcroft would have cha- made the change, which was uh, he had his fourth line on. Uh, Matt Barzell's line jumped, jumped on. This is, I think this was in the second period. I can't quite remember now. And he left Hamlin, uh, uh, Lavoie, and Ryan on the ice. And they ran that shift. It wasn't pretty, but they did get the puck out. Uh, they defended well, and away they went. And then the second time was, and this was a classic Jay Woodcroft, um, Holloway and McLeod were out there with Gagne, and Gagne had got caught out there in the offensive zone. And the nice play, got a whistle, went to a commercial break, guaranteed. McDavid dry settle was on the ice after that commercial break. Come back from commercial break. There's Holloway, McLeod, and Fogel on the ice. Like those are big things, right? You're creating roles for everybody on that team. Everybody feels involved. I think that's a big thing. I I think it's the biggest thing. Yeah. I think when you look back at Vegas last year, I remember the graphic that popped up before the uh, maybe it was the Western Conference Finals. You look at the minutes spread out between the four lines, mm-hmm. and it was. Pretty much even. Maybe the fourth line was down a couple of minutes. But like you said, like a lot of guys played. And I think two guys who played a lot more last night were Lavoie and Hamlin. I guess what have you – you see those guys a lot in Bakersfield. What have you seen from them in the NHL so far? 
Yeah. So, I mean, Hamlin is Hamlin, right? Like I think I said somewhere uh, on, on uh, uh, Oilers Nation that if you wanted a fourth line center, that's going to win you faceoffs, block shots, kill penalties, and probably sign five, 700 and whatever the minimum uh, contract is, sign five of those, five one-year deals. Uh, that's James Hamlin. And I he will, he'll give me an honest effort. And I just don't think uh, he'll ever hurt you. And um, so what you've seen so far is what you get. I'll be curious to see what happens when, you know, some of these injuries um, start to heal, what happens uh, to him. I'd like to see him stay. Lavoie, you know, uh, I've liked, I liked his, I liked his game last night. Um, I, he's just not a fourth line player, right? Like that's the, trouble you run into here with him so the question is i mean the coach talked about this he talked about everybody getting a role he talked about you know uh, his work with younger players you know okay you have dylan holloway out for a while um you can flip fogel to the left side do you try him for 12 minutes a night on a third line i i to me, that's a better fit for him. The fourth line is just a, not a great fit. But that said, that I mean, I liked his game last night. I, you know, I'd like to see him be a little more. He shot the puck, which was good. Uh, where I think Raphael Lavoie generates a lot of his uh, opportunities is when he's physical. And he's so far, he hasn't been that. He didn't shy away from it or, or anything like that. But I think he, he once he decides that he wants to be assertive at this level, I think he's going to realize that he's bigger and stronger than a lot of guys. And when he does that, he's going to create his own space. And then I think we'll get some good results. But a few more minutes a night is what is required for that. Now, of course, you've been fortunate enough to watch a couple of Jack Campbell starts in Bakersfield as well. But I don't want to go. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I want to go to the other goaltender in Bakersfield, hmm. in Rodrigue. And I know. I think someone tagged the two of us in a tweet the other day, saying like, hmm. "How is this helping his development? How, what do you kind of think of that dynamic right now for Rodrigue with Campbell? Do you think it's beneficial for him to sit on the bench a little bit more than he would?" Well. I mean, even with Pick Pickard there, he's sitting on the bench more than I thought he thought he would. Um, you know, his dad is the goalie coach. I I mean, I'm guessing that they, you know, I'm guessing there's a lot of discussions about this. What what I what the little I know about goaltending is when you see him in the net, he is completely different than Calvin Pickard, um, who I'm really this will be quite a circus when he plays, I think. Um, and Jack Campbell, which is, you know, he's very composed. He's stylist, uh, stylistically, he's very compact. His movements are nice, uh, like e efficient, uh, great rebound control. I, I like him every time I see him. And I mean, this is a guy I didn't have a lot of high hopes for because he would be that goalie that would look great and he'd give up that one goal. Um, I'd like, I'd, I, I, I would love to see him run run with it a little bit, but you know they're really with Pickard. I thought they should do that. I mean, with Campbell, I think you're kind of stuck. I think you have to figure out if Campbell is redeemable as a contract, right? Like I, you know, I I just don't know how long you give that, but for now, I'd be shocked if Campbell wasn't going to play just about every night. I, so the answer to your question is, I don't like it. Do they have a choice? I'm not sure they do. Yeah, it is a tough one. Um, I, there's one more player I quickly wanted to pick your brain about up at the NHL level, and you mentioned him as someone who they're going to need to probably step up here with Holloway out, and it's Ryan McLeod. I was beyond high on this guy coming into the year. I was like, okay, he's going to be healthy. Last year, like his box cars, he scored at a decent clip, yeah. like an 18-goal pace if he were to play 82 games. I'm watching him this year, and someone texted me a few weeks ago and was like, not an NHLer, just a guy that skates like one. And I can't now get that out of my head. I, I'm beyond frustrated with him. And I don't know if it's a confirmation bias. And he's like ruined in my eyes now. And I'll never see him good. I, am I imagining things? Do I? Am I right to be this frustrated with Ryan McLeod? Mm, so, so should we have seen better by now in the year? I think so. Um, but I think, again, one of the things gets lost in the shuffle is he's a very young player who missed the entire preseason. Um, 
you know, whatever that injury was, I have no idea, but he, you know, I just, for a young player, that's not great. That is just not great. And he plays the hardest position at forward. Um, you know, after that, you know, I, you could point to a confluence of events, uh, different line mates, even within game 11 and seven, a lot of things that may be out of his control. Should he have been better than that? I think he should have been better than that. I kind of shot out a tweet last night uh, after Knobloch. There was a camera shot of Knobloch uh, talking to him on the bench after he had come down the ice and basically skated himself into the corner and took a shot when really he had, you know, some people in my feed said that he probably had an opportunity to go straight to the net with it. I don't think that was quite there, but that's fine. It, the option looked like for some people, but there definitely was a give and go. And instead of doing that, you know, he skated himself into the corner. So, you know, what I, when Ryan McLeod was going last year, and it, this is not a comment on his character or determination or whatnot, he was not afraid to be on the wall, initiate contact, get contact initiated with them. And, and, you know, he would come off of that. Well, again, he's a big kid, right? He's a big, strong kid. He's not small and he skates well. And that's when he was having a lot of success this year. I see a lot of him not being the first guy on the puck when he could be not initiating contact. Now, I don't know if that's there, you know, if we still got a nagging injury here or if this is something that's carried into his play. Certainly, he was a second-round draft pick for this exact reason, which is he was not comfortable playing in the middle of the ice. Uh, that was totally different last year. So my hope is, um, you know, the turmoil, the injury start, you know, the injury at the start of the year, that that's all of that, and that if he gets some consistent light nights with, you know, a, a coach who gives him a, a different voice that we see that player again. I think he's an NHL player. I think he's going to be a third line center on this team for a long time. But boy, when people push back on that, <laughs> it's hard to argue with them right now. It's not been a great start. Yeah, we we've pointed out a couple of moments where there's been times where it's like, dude, you skate so fast. Just use your speed and go, go straight. And I forget what game it was now. It was, um the last game yeah San Jose wasn't it yeah where he had a chance to just go to the net and he tried to stop mm -hmm. up and do like a hesitation move around the D-man I'm like dude you skate better than him just go just give her yeah well the the last night the the you know the play that I tweeted out if you if you think about it you know what a couple of people on my feed said is well Bruce I didn't see the game and goal what I saw was is him driving the net and I kind of looked at it and said well I didn't see it there but then if you think about it from your perspective you know what you what you guys are raising you know what? He's so big and he skates so fast that at the absolute worst, he's going to cause chaos in the middle of the ice. More than likely, he's going to draw a penalty and maybe, you know, randomly the puck ends up on Warren Fogel's stick and there's an opportunity for a goal. I agree with that. I mean, he just, you, you would almost, you know, if you could take, Warren Fogel's personality <laughs> and put it into Ryan McLeod's body. I think it would be something special. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Uh, we are ripping through our hour here. So we got to let you go, Bruce. We really appreciate you yeah, hopping in with all the insight. Yeah, awesome. Good to see you guys. Thanks, and, Bruce. And we avoided Bill's Thank talk, you. which is good. Uh, Bruce Kerlock <laughs> on the Star Mechanical guest line, starmechanical.ca, 780 481 8873. If you need 24 7 emergency service, they got you. They've been doing this for more than 20 years. Big up, Star Mechanical. Um, that was good with Bruce. I feel calmer about McLeod. I think maybe, you know, we'll get some good hockey out of him eventually. But man, just I just I noticed the play dying on his stick a lot. Like, I don't know. And I can't tell if it's yeah. just me noticing these things now at a, at a much higher clip, but I don't know. He frustrates the crap out of me too. It's like he's a great player, and I think he does a lot of good stuff. I just need to see that offensive ability. The yeah. I love the comparison of being like if you could put Bogle's mentality, because Bogle, boy, oh boy. He, he hasn't slowed down, dude. No, it, man, I hit he had a Mayfield last night. It was huge. It was a good one. Yeah. Um, thanks to everyone for the likes. That was fun. We are 113 likes, and we have not asked for a, a like once today. So thank you, everyone, for just instinctually hitting the like. You're all cruising. You're yeah, all cruising I got something today. that the viewers, I think, are going to like, and then you're going to get some likes. Shout out to Eric 
our graphic designer guy because he's been listening to the show and he just sent me this. Oh no! The knob gobbler T-shirt. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I don't know if that will ever become real, but I like the image right there on my screen. Generally, uh, I'm sure it would make him feel very weird. Chris Knoblock, that is. Um, but that's what we're about. He'll learn. Chris, if you're watching, we grilled Dave Tippett on that mustache for years, and he never brought it back. So if you could buy into the whole knob thing. Might make yourself some fans. That's all I'm saying. Uh, let's get to the menu for tonight. It is delivered by DoorDash, where for a limited time, our Canadian listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when they download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. It's coming on the screen. All, all caps on NATION. You'll see it on your screen in just a second here. The menu tonight, busy night in the NHL. Penguins, Jack, yeah. Bruins, Sabres, Habs, Flames, Golden Knights, Capitals, rematch of that Stanley Cup final from a few years back. Ducks, Preds, Yotes, Stars, Devils, Jets, Lightning, Blues, Panthers, Sharks. Kind of a weird slate. Why? I don't know. Just not like a, there's no matchup on that. That's like, that'll be awesome. You know what I mean? Uh, Boston and Buffalo, Buffalo might be okay. Yeah, that'll be okay. Yeah. Um, anyways, elsewhere on the menu, no, no, no football tonight. Obviously, NBA is not a great night. Everyone's doing that in tournament season thing, and it just really confuses it. the hell out of me. Like I think these are still regular season games. They yeah. are. It's just weird. They just count towards the courts look awful. Yeah. It's so no, hard to look at. I like it. I like that they're trying to do something different. I just mm -hmm. don't understand it. And by the sounds of it, neither do the players. <laughs> Which is the other objectively <laughs> yeah. funny part about all this. Yeah, it's uh but hey, we say here all the time and say all oh, the NHL does nothing to go out of their own yeah. way. So come February, NBA. March, I bet we'll Ooh. start to like that. But wait a second. Did you hear what the NBA said today? No. Adam Silver talked about expansion. He said Vancouver and Montreal are both possibilities for whenever that happens. I would love Vancouver. Just like as someone now who's flown out to that coast a couple times in the last week, it would be so nice flex. to line up a weekend. Flex, <laughs> flex, <laughs> work trips, flex. Um, it would be very nice to like Oilers play on a Saturday. There's an NBA game on a Friday or Sunday and you just yeah. do a little bang, bang sports weekend out of it. It'd be sick. It would be great. I, I would love that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the NBA, but yeah. having a team close by would yeah. increase that fandom in me. Um, elsewhere in news today around the hockey world, uh, players from Hockey Canada's 28 World Junior 2018 World Junior team have appealed a ruling from an independent adjudicative panel. So there was a statement released by Hockey Canada today. Essentially, a ruling's been made. This is from Frank. So I'm reading Frank's tweet. A ruling has been made on Hockey Canada's own punish punishment, but since players have appealed, there's a gag order on findings to ensure we do not interfere with the integrity of the appeal process. So I don't know what's going on with that. It seems confusing. I feel like we're just never going to get an answer. I am with you on that. Um, and this one from overseas, a uh, man arrested in the death of Adam Johnson and charged with manslaughter. Um, British law says they won't release his name. Obviously, we know who it is. Um, I, listen, I know some. there was a couple comments about it. I don't want to get into this thing. I don't know if this is my place to talk about it. I think it's an incredibly ugly and unfortunate incident. And I don't know if this is the resolution I I want. I know it's not the resolution I wanted. I think it's just unfortunate. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to get into it's it. Either. It's, it's not really died. what we do on this show. A man died, and that's very horrible sad. what happened. And the, the hockey world has reacted in, yep. in a very positive way of trying to make players safer on the ice. I know pretty much every junior league in Canada, I think, has, has yeah. tucked into the, the net guard thing. And that's it. And then we'll obviously just let the authorities deal with it themselves. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that is a good way to do it. Dak, he says, I feel for his family. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Tyler Mulek, let's not touch this with a 10 foot pole. Good plan. Instead, <laughs> let's maybe talk about what we like this evening on the slate and what we want to maybe dip into the bankroll and place some wagers on Florida Panthers puck line. I'm in on it. That's my pick. Yeah, if it's they're... minus 120. Sharks have failed to cover him back to back. They're back on their bullshit. Let's go. Let's go cats. No, it took a nice couple of games out there back on that too. Um, what are the yotes tonight? What are the yotes odds tonight? We got those handy. I don't. My I phone's now freezing. I probably pulled that up myself. I like the oats. They're dogs. They are dogs. They're desert dogs yeah. and they're dogs on the money line. Desert so. dogs. I like the desert dogs. And <laughs> I also like plus 200 plus 200. Damn. That's Are you really serious? Good. Straight up money line plus 200. We're in yep. squad bet. Air five. Are they Darn. good? The Yotes. Yeah. They're Are on they a one good? game win streak. Are hey, they playing again? About 500. Who did I just say they're playing against? 
Dallas. Oh, there's, Dallas. There's four minutes left in the show. I'm uh, uh, I'm all in on the Oats. We got to get right. some up to see it. Yep, let's do it. Uh, speaking of Arizona, if you missed out on our nation vacation to Seattle, remember, you can still get in on the trip to Zona. The Oilers are heating up, and you could be heating up this winter, February 18th to 20th. We are taking this show on the road. It's presented by Alberta Blue Cross. February 18th to 20th, you get your flights, you get your hotel, you get your hockey tickets, and Again, flights are expensive that weekend, too. Oh, yeah. So this is this is going to be a good time. And if you talk to people who are on the Seattle trip, you can just buy it at nationgear.ca, kick your feet up, and we take care of you. Don't worry about it. Yeah, the rest is dumb for you. Yeah, and it's all possible because of our friends at Alberta Blue Cross. ab.bluecross.ca slash travel if you want more information on how they can help you protect your memories with their fantastic travel insurance. Shout out to Alberta Blue Cross. Shout out to everyone who's already bought in to the Arizona Nation vacation. I would love to see more of you there. Um, Mulek says, love the Yotes. Byron, any update on Yanmark? No, no update on Not Yanmark. Not skating either. Yeah, so... Feels like he's still quite a ways away, but Connor Brown did skate today for the Oilers. So he looks good on some of this practice video. Gregor hell, showed. Hell yeah. The um, I never considered the LTIR money thing. Mm, yeah, makes sense. It makes that's probably why they're not LTIR employers. Probably because they can make it work. Yeah, yeah. they they find a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, maybe Frank Cervalli, but he might be flying to Sweden. Okay. <laughs> really? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, sick. I don't know when he. I don't know if he. I forget if he flies today or tomorrow. I just. I don't know why that made me laugh. It's, oh, okay. Sweden. Sweet. Sweden. Oh yeah, these those global games. Yeah, the Leafs. Thing is, Leafs are there yeah. right Sweden. now. Yeah, I wonder if we're gonna get a William Nylander extension while the Leafs are in Sweden. Oh, that'd be good. He said he had to buy ninety to a hundred tickets, and his grandmother, who's never seen him play, is mm-hmm. like, and then, that's cool. And then they asked him. They said, "Oh, how old are your grandma and grandpa?" And he said, "I don't know, old." Yeah. <laughs> Fair. What does it matter at some point? Sure. Uh, you some fact or fiction. Fact. Yeah. Uh, Maynard says, shout out to Waz for staying on YouTube for three hours the other night. Sure, shout out to Waz. Why not? What did he talk about? I don't know. Sometimes I should to talk about things for an hour. Oh, yeah. Like, Woody. It's it's 12.57. <laughs> we are out of juice. Woody, we did a 30-minute show yesterday, and I had nothing else left to say. I got everything off my chest about yep. Woody. Oh, well, I wonder what he's doing. Somebody asked me at the game last night. He's like, do you think he's watching? He's like, no, no, he know. better be on vacation. I don't know. I, think, I don't think he is. Packing his mm. house. Mm. Mm. Oh, before we go. <laughs> great. Um, gesture by the team yesterday. Oh yeah, to get Coach Garlic's family on the screen. Oh really? Facetime. You see that? They nope. they said after the game they presented him with the park. He they did like a little speech like, hey, like thanks, blah blah. blah. I love you guys. Uh, yep. And then because everyone on the floor they're on the room. <laughs> and, then, and then they put his family on a Facetime. <laughs> yes. This tweet here. Nabla says the team had a video monitor with his wife on Facetime call after the game, congratulating him. Is he was presented the game puck and he kissed everyone? That's crazy. <laughs> I like <it>. That's crazy. <laughs> New crazy. coach things. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap this thing up because we just fell off a cliff performance wise, and we got Oilers Nation Radio, and we have a meeting in a minute. Who's yeah. scheduling our days? Who's uh, letting this happen? Not me. Uh, yeah, definitely not me. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, who tuned in today. Shout out to Sports Closet, Sherwood Ford, The Giant, Sherwood Sports, and Sherwood Power Sports, and Marine, Star Mechanical, and Bruce Kerlock for appearing on the guest line. Alberta Blue Cross, DoorDash, and Betway. Everyone on the Fitting Cat YouTube chat, you were tremendous today, and you better believe we'll be right back tomorrow at 12.01 Mountain Time. We'll chat with you then. Thank you for watching Oilers Nation every day. Hit the subscribe button to never miss a show. And for more, visit OilersNation.com. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.